Phantasmagoria is a Victorian style children's bedroom. There's most of the taxidermy works are toy themed, which is a bit of a, a move from my regular animal rights food themed pieces that I've been doing. So we have a rocking alpaca with pearl harness and ostrich plumes. Um, there's a piglet and a pram, a, a rabbit drawn carriage, um, a porcelain doll that I made when I was 11 years old that I've remodelled into an artwork um, called Ostara and various other taxidermy animals and skulls and that sort of thing to, to give the bedroom a feel. And there's a lot of stuff from my childhood in here like antique tin toys that were my great-grandmothers um, and a dresser that was my great-grandmothers as well that I had in my bedroom when I was growing up. There's a few pictures of fairies on the walls that I had as a child as well and yeah, just a combination of different, different things that represent me as a child. I first started looking into taxidermy when I was about 15 when I realised it was something you could actually learn how to do and tried to find a taxidermist to teach me but no one would take me seriously because I was a 16 year old girl and it's a pretty male dominated industry. Uh, when I moved to Melbourne I met a retired taxidermist who offered to teach me um, which I've now realised I was very lucky because there's not many people out there that are willing to do that these days. Um, I've always been a big animal lover. I've been a vegetarian since I was nine and I'm a vegan now. So for me, the taxidermy is about preserving and celebrating life. Everything I work on has died of natural causes and um, the pieces are really meant to be respectful and beautiful and fragile and to kind of to get, get people up close to animals to see how beautiful they are and to, to show them that you know everything deserves respect and love. The idea for Phantasmagoria came about actually when I was doing my exhibition for Melbourne Now and it was originally meant to be targeted at children and have a kids program attached and the NGV decided it was getting too dark, like there were black walls and there were deer that had rubies pouring out of their necks and that sort of thing and although they thought most kids would be fine with it, they felt like if they targeted at children and someone, people could easily complain if their kids did get freaked out because it didn't really look like a kid's Thing, and so we ended up doing a separate children's program but I was telling my mum about it and she kind of laughed and she said well you'd never think of that because you wanted a black room when you were little and you played with dead things. So that kind of, when Nick came to invite me to be in, in the show I kind of was thinking about that and we really wanted it to be quite different to my exhibition in Melbourne now so I decided to do a self-portrait of me as a child and um, basically what my dream bedroom would have been if I had full creative control over what colour I did the walls and what kind of things I would have around me and you know there are elements in here that, that are from my childhood and from my family but also works of mine that are you know very kind of playful and, and toy like so it's just it's really yeah it's a, it's a very loose self portrait of course but that, that's where the idea came from and I just kind of took it from there and started creating more and more pieces that fit the theme and... There's a, there's a sense of fantasy but it's also it's tinged with darkness. Yeah, and for me, you know, I guess it's the same thing. The, for me, what's dark is not necessarily dark. Like I, I think dark and light and, you know, life and death are all kind of intertwined and it may seem macabre or morbid but to me this piece is more about life and about you know happy things and, and um, fascination and that sort of thing than it is about anything frightening or, or scary. The Victorian, the Gothic, what draws you to that? For me the Victorians it was their aesthetic which I'm really drawn to because of its beauty and their attention to detail but also the way they dealt with death. Um, they were quite eccentric and quite sentimental and I think our society is lacking that these days. I really like the way that they would take the hair of a deceased loved one or you know wear photos and they'd kind of carry a part of that person around with them and I think it's a really healthy and beautiful way to deal with death. Um, it's a lot more sterile and clinical now and kind of swept under the carpet. So yeah I'm just I'm inspired by a lot of the ways they lived their lives. Obviously there were a lot of ways that were maybe not so great but